Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with John Bandcamp, who's sitting in for the insane Daryl Wayne. Uh, We're going to go to Texas, and we're going to uh, talk to Dr. Bruce Bard. I hope I got his name. Did I get your name halfway close? It was close. It's Baird, but it's Baird. Bard, Baird. Just don't call us late for dinner. That's what we uh, said. Yeah, it, it's Alan. The, the way I spell it, I get all kinds of things. So uh, Baird, Dr. Bruce Baird. And we're going to talk about communicating with your dentist, your doctor, because I think that's the key. And in today's society, whether you have insurance or don't have insurance, you get four or five minutes with your dentist before he says, open wide and um and 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 doesn't tell you often what he's going to do in there (laughs) would that be accurate well it's not it's not inaccurate i will tell you that uh you know dentists have have a you know we're all pretty much engineers and uh you know and and most of our patients tend to not be that engineer mentality and so i've been working for years teaching dentists how to speak maybe a little bit of a different language um, uh, to patients. It also helped uh, that God has a sense of humor and gave me four daughters because I had to, <laughs> had to learn to speak a different language there also. So, uh, but I think the communicating with not only with patients, but with, you know, other business owners with, you know, kind of across the board, learning to communicate to me is kind of one of the, the primary steps in leadership and, and, uh, and growing businesses. And I, I, you know, I, I really enjoy that aspect of, uh, of, of the occupation and of being kind of a serial entrepreneur and having other businesses also. Did you know when you don't practice anymore, do you? I, I, I clinically not anymore, but I still lecture across the internationally and across the country on communication skills and, and uh, a lot of things that do still have to do with the business of dentistry. Right. So when you were practicing, practicing um, a a wet finger dentist, I believe is what the what the the industry term is when you were doing. Did you communicate well with your patients and other business people? Absolutely. I I mean, that's what I love doing. It's it's probably the clinical skills came easy to me. I've always enjoyed tinkering, you know, and doing uh, and doing things, uh, you know, Uh, like that. And with dentistry, it kind of fell perfect. But the communication skills, that's the thing and the patience and the relationships that I was able to build over 42 years in dentistry. That's what I miss that and my team. uh, You know, I still go up to the office, I'll be up at the office at least twice this week, just uh, go in and say hello to everybody, uh, get my teeth cleaned. And uh, but that's what I miss. The 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 interaction with people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's what's fun. Whereas, you know, many and many dentists are learning those new skills of communicating. I well, I started my career in the military, but then I came here to Texas and they were building a nuclear power plant just eight miles down the road. Oh, <laughs> and, and I know. And, and we had all kinds of engineers coming in and I tend to communicate. I, I plan my cases more like an engineer, but I communicate a little bit more outgoing And I was having a tough time communicating with the engineers. And I finally realized, oh, my gosh, well, that's why dentists are having trouble, you know, communicating with patients. And and that's uh, that's something that we've really focused on over the years. Different audiences need different communication skills. Know your audience. Years ago, I uh, I was skinny as a kid and growing up. And for some reason, I was invited to speak to the to a, a group of bariatric Patients. I mean, these are people who are obese. And I told stories about the problems of being skinny. (laughs) I didn't get a single laugh. (laughs) Know your audience. Know your audience. Absolutely true. And, And my team knows my audience, too. When I would walk into the office you know, they would say, you know, we have an engine. I, I say we only have two types of patients, the engineer and the non-engineer, because they would say, oh, we've got an engineer in room, you know, in room one. I said, OK, well, I love that now that I, I've learned to speak engineer because you have to have a furrowed brow and have questions and you have to answer every single question before they can move forward with whatever it is they want to do, um, whereas others 
if they just like you, they're going to do the work that you recommend. And so it's kind of a, it's a combination. It's a combination of those things. Uh, a number of years ago, I interviewed a woman doctor, uh, orthopedic surgeon, whose undergraduate and graduate degrees was in engineering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? You I know. And, you know, if I need a knee replacement, I'm going to see her. Oh, right? ab absolutely. And more than likely, you're going to be asleep and they're not going to be talking much to you. So that's, a, you know, that, that, that's the good part of that. Well, it's the it's the pain part afterwards. Fortunately, I do have good knees. I just want everybody to know that. Uh, it's the brain that may go, but that's because <laughs> I'm in radio and TV. Why would a dentist be considered an engineer? You know, it just falls into, you know, tinkering with small things. And it's it just if you look kind of across the board at the dental schools and the, the students that go, you know, they're into biology, they're into, you know, organic chemistry, they're into all of these specifics. And it just tends to be uh, kind of stacks on, on top of itself. Uh, but they do come out. Now, I can look at uh, a doctor and he'll have a very successful practice, but those are the guys who usually, or, and, and when I say guys, I use that collectively, but they're the, the ones who have good communication skills. They, they grow a, a wonderful business, a great practice. And the ones who have difficulty and struggle are the ones who really have never really focused on communication They, you know, and, and, and it really does make a major difference in your business in your, in your life and how you're able to communicate with people, uh, how you're able to build relationships with people. Um, and so there are things that we do with every single patient that, that helps me get to know the patient, you know, maybe where they grew up, where they're from, how long have they lived here? Those are all things that are part of my exam process, even before I look at the teeth. And that to me is, it's important. And it may only take me 30 seconds to do that or, or a minute, but it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to making decisions or being a leader or, you know, any of those things. One of the things that I, I, I believe is that people think of dentists in the same way that um, Steve Martin portrayed uh, <laughs> the doctor in Little Shop of Horrors, uh, that uh, all dentists love to inflict pain. Oh, boy. Um, right? You, yeah, you know, and so if I go to the dentist, and I just went within the last month or six weeks, I had a cleaning, and he gave me a whole, um, told me what he wants to do and all this. Very nice guy. Um, uh, very personable. Turns out he like we have the same kind of hobbies. Um, but do people still think of dentists as pain merchants? <laughs> well, it's it's gotten a lot better. I can say that. I mean, with the technology that we have today, um, either through sedation or even light sedation, as well as the equipment that we're using, everything in dentistry now is 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 focused on a comfortable experience, something that is, uh, you know, something that's not something that's dreaded and feared by every patient. That doesn't mean we don't get lots of patients who uh, dread coming to the dentist. I'm not a big fan myself personally, and I'm a dentist. Why? Because I just, you know, I can think of other things like playing golf or other things I'd rather do. But for your health, the overall health, it's critical because we see so much more of the oral systemic connection now, how the bacteria in the mouth affect, you know, from Alzheimer's to uh, all kinds of uh, diseases uh, in the body. And so it's, it's really changing and we're seeing a lot of that. Well, it is obvious to me that you are not like Steve Martin, though I was going to ask you if you could sing the song, but <laughs> yeah, it might be tough. <laughs> might be tough. Okay. Um, all right. Late night health continues. Don't go away. More coming up.
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids. And she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing. And with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging, parents or just have fun find out about the advertising opportunities with late night health call us at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at late night health.com that's info at late night health.com join late night health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care call now at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 the latest from the greatest, the best in new music by classic rockers, with your host, the insane Daryl Wayne. This is Alice Cooper, and if Daryl Wayne is insane, what does that make me criminally insane? Stick around to find out. Many of the artist interviews for the latest from the greatest have been captured on audiobook. There is a volume one and volume two. Great information and conversations with people in the industry and people surrounded by the industry and of course the rock stars themselves i'm the reverend al green and you're listening to the insane daryl wayne and i said wayne insane you can find it on amazon or blackstone audio search for the latest from the greatest from daryl wayne d-a-r-r-e-l-l w-a-y-n-e hello this is weird al yankovic and you're listening to the insane Daryl Wayne, aren't you? <laughs> Role models, they can make all the difference. In our world today, they have never been more important. One of the nation's most successful mentoring organizations is Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of Los Angeles. Their mission is to assist youth in achieving their full potential through innovative and impactful programs. And no nonprofit agency does it better. Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of LA serves Jewish children, boys and girls in our local community with a mentoring program that's been going strong since 1915. That's only the beginning. This nationally known agency owns and operates Camp Bob Waldorf. Its summer camping and weekend retreat programs enrich the lives of youth throughout greater Los Angeles. Then there's a college support program, and last but not least, work that helps kids all over the world through the Teen Talk app. Want to learn more? Go to jbbbsla.org. Donate. Get involved. There's no better way to make a difference. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. We are talking uh, with uh, Dr. Bruce Bard. Uh, he is uh, uh, he's the author of Legendary Leadership, and he spends his time helping doctors communicate not only with their patients, but with their staff and other businesses. Um, you mentioned when we started our show that you have other uh, interests other than dentistry. Uh, what other businesses are you operating right now, if I may ask? Well, I've, I've actually been very fortunate. I have uh, I have a consulting company that does work with, in dentistry. Uh, we have a marketing company as a part of that based all out of uh, 
out of Anacortes, Washington. We have about 35 employees up there and we work with dentists uh, and we have folks that are all over the country that also do consulting for dentists, helping them, you know, up their game, uh, learn how to communicate better, learn how to schedule better, learn how uh, to do those things. Uh, I also started a finance company, interestingly enough, uh, to try to help patients who don't get the usual third-party financing from a bank. Maybe their their credit's not as good. So I started a company called Compassionate Finance uh, 12 years ago. We just sold uh, a year ago to a private equity firm, and I still work with them and am and, and kind of a key opinion leader for them and an investor in that company. So what I, a great I, name, by the way. Yeah, what a compassionate. It was, it, it yeah. was a, yeah, compassionate finance, because dentists have a great opportunity to be able to help people. And you can't let a person, you know, if you only do dentistry on somebody that a bank's willing to loan money, where you're leaving 50 to 60% of those patients unable to get treatment. And so we allow, you know, we allow that, uh, we take care of that problem. And we've done over 300 million in notes for dentists. Uh, it's them actually doing their own in-house paper, and we do all the back-end stuff. So it's something that has been, been wonderful for patients, and, and it's really allowed them to get the work that they deserve, and we've loved it. Uh, what about you know dental insurance? And I'll give my opinion uh, yeah. on that. I've had it. Um, mm -hmm. You pay uh, 1000 or $1,500 a year for insurance, and uh, they cap you at $1,500 uh, of, of, of for your um for, for dental care it doesn't make sense to me you know it's it's basically in my opinion kind of a scam uh you know they separated the mouth from the body a long time ago so that they could sell a product called dental insurance uh when i first started in dentistry in, in 1976 the you know the average patient would you know have 1500 worth of insurance and a crown at that time was uh 70 dollars well you know, that's great. And you could get quite a bit of work done. Well, the premiums have gone up. The uh, benefit has not gone up. Uh, if it had, your benefits would probably be 5000 a year instead of 1500 or more. Uh, and what ends up happening is a crown uh, might be 12 in California might be $1,500 for a single crown or more. And that uses your whole insurance for one tooth. And the problem there is patients start to think, well, insurance is the one making decisions and helping them determine what they need. And the problem with that is insurance could care less what you need. They're just only going to pay 1500. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pay 1500. Their responsibility is to their shareholders and it has nothing to do with your mouth. And so people have to, you know, I, I like to use the joke when I go into a, another business, uh, for example, maybe even a restaurant. I said, do you guys carry my insurance? And they look at me like, you know, I've got an item <laughs> in my forehead or something. I said, yeah, I have this special insurance. I shouldn't have to pay this much. And nobody gets it. But, you know, it is true because that's the way they walk in. I only want to, have to do what dental insurance will cover. That might have worked in 1965, but it doesn't work in 2022. And the same is is true with with general health care insurance oh, sure. uh, too because doctors are not in charge they're not taking they're not allowed to be in charge doctor mm -hmm. says i want you to have your left elbow operated on and the insurance says nope we only do right elbows that's right okay you, you nailed you nailed that um right on the head because you know again i look at insurance as um a method of payment you know, not a method of treatment that I know pretty much what they're going to cover, you know? And so I just tell the patient, you have insurance. Great. Well, that's, that'll help you for a thousand dollars or $1,500, but you need X amount of work. And then the question starts. So it's, uh, it's really one of those, one of those situations, but through, you know, through communication skills, working with your patients, explaining to them, what the insurance really means, uh, I think that there's a big benefit to that. I, you know, when people understand that their health, you know, their oral health can literally cost them thousands of dollars a year from the standpoint of diabetics, you know, and all of this stuff. Whereas if you can keep a healthy mouth, uh, you can reduce medications in many different areas. Uh, you know, because what what's happened? The pharmaceutical companies have come in and said, "Hey, we have a pill for you." 
and you see it on TV every day, we have a pill. So the physicians have become more pill writers than they have, you know, anything else. And I mean, I don't know about you. I'm, I take several medications that I go, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll take it. It's going to be better. But as opposed to fixing the ultimate problem, which is the underlying disease process, hey, we're not into that. You know, we're we're more into giving you a couple pills. So and that's what doctors and dentists should do. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, yeah. they should find the, the I mean, holistic doctors. I've gone to uh, I, I had a holistic dentist that I went to for right. a while and he was terrific. I mean, yeah. I, I, I videotaped him uh, uh, removing um, amalgam. Yep. from patients he was dressed in a hazmat suit that well you know it's uh i i don't know if that's stati the statistic is still but i mean it's outlawed in 19 countries but uh, yet it's still a, a real popular thing in the united states which for me i haven't done one since i haven't done a mercury filling since 1984. so uh, i congratulations realize, i realize if you couldn't bury it in the backyard without uh you know the the old amalgam or mercury if you couldn't bury it in the backyard without the epa saying something well why could i bury it in somebody's mouth and that was my ultimate thought process <laughs> yeah the um uh, i guess the enamel uh, uh fillings are are a better choice yeah they are i mean early on the materials were probably substandard to, to the amalgam. But from a health standpoint, that's where that's that's where the, you kind of start to draw the line. And I've had patients who are extremely sensitive to mercury. And I've had patients who, I mean, somebody like myself, I've been doing dentistry for 42 years and my mercury levels are very low. Whereas my partner was a dentist for 12 years and his mercury levels were really high. And so you have to look at all the different things that your body chelates and takes care of. And so everybody's different. And that's what we know in healthcare. I, I, where do I just from that? Anyway, yeah. um, uh, let's talk briefly uh, about your book, Legendary Leadership. Is this a book just for dentists or is this a book for anybody who's in business? It's in business. It's it's more of a business book than it is anything else. And it, it's a book based on my experiences of running multiple different businesses over the years and being truthfully the worst boss on the planet early on and having <laughs> to do a lot of self-reflection. And, uh, and, and, and it's almost a joke. If somebody that worked for me 35 years ago read this book, they would go, they got the wrong author here. This, this is a wrong guy. So I think leadership is legendary leadership is a goal. It is, it's a, you know, it's, it's the journey, you know, the, not the destination. And you, you want to always become a better leader because it helps everybody and everybody loves to be around you. Everybody loves to be in, in a business that you have. And, uh, and it's a little bit self-deprecating. I mean, I'm 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 more more than happy to make fun of myself and say, "What the heck was I thinking?" Uh, also, um, you know, this this part of self-reflection, being able to look back and say, "Okay, I, I think I've got a better idea." And it's going to be available uh, on Amazon here soon. And I know you guys will be posting it up there. We will. We will indeed. Uh, and possibly legendary leadership would be good for wives to buy. Uh, to to run the business of of the family, uh, Doctor. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate your uh, time, your humor, and uh, the fact that you're uh, a compassionate dentist and trying to uh, to make uh, dental health better for people all around the world. Well, thank you guys. I sure enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with John Van Camp. And John, thank you very much for sitting in for Daryl. We My really pleasure, appreciate as that. Always. And um, uh, join us at latenighthealth.com. We'll have Dr. Bard's uh, pretty picture up there and a little article and a link to his uh, website as well. Have a good week, everybody. Have a great week. And most importantly, have a healthy week. Hey, take that walk around the block. I went back to the gym this week. I really did. See you next time. Bye bye for now.